What's up guys, my name is Kenji and welcome to the vlog. I've recently had an increase in the number of subscribers, um, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kenji and I'm a first year medical student at the King's College London. I'm actually a graduate, so I did my undergraduate degree in Birmingham, which is biomedical science. I've recently been on the uh, student room and I've had loads of people message me asking about a few tips um, about the MMI uh, medicine interviews and also some questions that do commonly come up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two videos. In this video I'm going to be talking to you guys about the most common um, questions that come up in the MMI. And the next video I'm going to post will be on some general tips um, about the MMI itself. During my medicine application I had two interviews. Um, I had one postgraduate interview at Birmingham. Now the interview was at King's College London. So as I said in this video I'm going to be giving you guys around 10 to 15 uh, of the most commonly asked questions from what from my experience. This is all coming from my personal experience um, at the interview. Um, it's also coming from my friends who are medics and it's also from the mock interviews that I had. Um, do bear in mind that I'm not giving you guys the specific questions that I was given in my interviews. Um, we were made to sign a contract to say that we're not going to give away um, any of the questions. So unfortunately I can't give you guys the exact questions I was given. Do bear in mind that they'll be very very similar to the actual questions that you might have in your interviews. So first of all I'm going to tell you guys what the MMI um, interview actually is. Because some of you might be very new to the application process. So the MMI interview basically stands for multiple mini interview. Um, and it's basically a new way of assessing the applicants. Um, the old way was a panel interview where basically... Um, you had a panel of people and you sat there for like an hour um, and they asked you a bunch of different questions um, but they found that quite hard to differentiate um, between all the applicants um, so they introduced this thing called the MMI which is used by almost all of the medical schools within the UK so in the interview um, you normally come into medical school and you sit down in the lobby um, you normally you know wait around 10-15 minutes if, depending on how early you are um, as soon as it's time for the interview they normally send out a medical student or someone who works there to bring you into the briefing room um, so in the briefing room, you normally sit there for maybe 10 to 15 minutes and they basically have uh, one of the assessors come out and tell you how the interview is going to run. So as soon as you're done with that, you have a few minutes to use the toilet. Um, once you get the toilet out of the way, um, you go into the interview room and you sit down on one of the chairs. So the way it's arranged is that it's arranged kind of like a hospital ward. Um, so there's normally around six or seven different stations around the room, like in, you know, in a circle or in a square, which separates um, you from each, um, each station. So while you're inside the interview room, as I said, it is only separated by very thin walls, so you can hear what's going on in different stations around you. But as I said, it's supposed to resemble a hospital ward, um, so you, know, you will expect a bit of noise. So once you sit down in the chair, um, some universities like Birmingham basically have um, a, a paper which, which basically gives you some information about the station. Um, some interview stations like in Kings um, don't have anything at all. Um, so you basically sit down outside the station and as soon as you hear the bell ring, you go into the station and they'll read you the question out, uh, out, out loud towards you. I guess the good thing about having some information uh, beforehand means that it gives you a bit of time to kind of think through your answer and structure your answer so that when you do go in, you have something to talk about. However, in places like Kings, they kind of just give you the question ahead of you and you don't really have that much time to think. Um, so if you do have a station like that, I do recommend that you spend 30 seconds um, just thinking through an answer and structuring it. When I was in my King's interview and they asked me a question, I'd be like, sorry, could you just give me 30 seconds just to, you know, just think about my answer? And they actually really do like that because it shows that you are thinking about the answer and you're not just going to jump to conclusions. So once you sit down, you have about one or two minutes to prepare for the next station. Um, so if you do have something to read through, you, you know, you obviously read through it. Um, if you don't have anything to read through, you kind of just sit there and prepare for the station to come. Um, so between these stations, as soon as they're done, um, they ring a bell or there's like a sound that plays. Uh, which means that the station is now over. As soon as the station is over, you move on to the next station, uh, sit outside the next chair, and then either read through the um, read through the paper, or if you don't have one, just sit there and just chill. So use that time in between each station to kind of relax, um, get your head together, and forget, and I do stress, forget what happened in the last station. Uh, if you do bad in one station, it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole interview is, is messed up. The good thing about the MMI is it gives you an equal opportunity at every single station to do well. So in the MMI, they almost always have a station on data interpretation. Um, so this is a math station and what happens in the station really does depend on the university. So for example, in Birmingham, um, I was a full station on my own where I basically just sat down and had a maths question to do on my own. Um, in some universities, um, they have stations where it's an interviewer. So basically they give you like a graph or a chart or whatever it is um, and they ask you to you know read off some values do a few calculations and do all of this in front of the interviewer and in this station I definitely have to stress that none of these questions will be harder than what they were in the UK CAT um, so what I'll do before the interview is basically go through your UK CAT book or whatever resource you use for UK CAT and just basically practice the questions and try to remind yourself of all the maths techniques um, that they require for the UK CAT um, so it's all just basically GCC maths or below and if you revise the station 
this really is a station where you can get full marks on it um, because the majority of times it is um, simple uh, maths like the UK CAT. In the MMR you can almost always guarantee that there'll be at least one ethical scenario question. These are the questions that the medical schools absolutely love to ask you um, and it's something that you can actually prepare for. My interviews are actually predicted two of the questions that would come up um, so if you do do a bit of research you can kind of understand uh, what kind of questions they normally ask you. Because these can be any ethical questions. Um, there can be stuff like abortion, you know, sort of what are your views on abortion? Uh, what would you do in a scenario if this person came in and wanted to do an abortion? They also ask you stuff like, if you made a mistake in hospital, uh, what would you do? How would you handle a situation like this? Um, if you, you know, you gave the person the wrong drug or you gave them a uh, wrong intervention or wrong treatment, how would you handle this situation? They might also ask you a question like, if one of your friends uh, or fellow medical students on drugs, uh, you know, what would you do in that situation? Um, so these all relate to ethical scenarios and I want to post the link down below. Um, I think it's the medical portal that I used, uh, which basically gave me a list of all different types of ethical scenarios uh, that you can prepare beforehand uh, to make sure you do really well in this, this, this um, station. Another station that they might have in MMI interviews um, is basically uh, a station on your motivation and insight into medicine. Personally, this is the station that I found the, the hardest um, because it requires you to have quite a bit of knowledge about the NHS. Um, so you can basically talk about things like the junior doctor contract, uh, the seven day NHS, the current social care crisis, um, the, the problems with mental health um, care in the, in the NHS. So these are just ideas that you can kind of look into. Um, so you do need to know a lot about the NHS and a lot about what's going on with the NHS. I'd also recommend just knowing the general structure of the NHS, uh, maybe know um, when the NHS was founded, uh, what's, how much do they spend on healthcare? And basic facts like that you kind of have to know. Um, so do go onto the maybe BBC website, type in NHS and look into the problems or the um, situation um, that the NHS is currently in. Another thing regarding your kind of motivation and insight into medicine that they can ask you about is your personal statement. So they're likely to ask you about some aspect of your personal statement that kind of um, increased your motivation for doing medicine. So they might ask you about your work experience. Um, so do know your work experience back to front. I ask you about uh, what made you want to do medicine, um, just some aspect which kind of shows that you really uh, do want to do medicine and you really are motivated to do medicine. Um, but like I said, the hardest thing for me was the NHS um, questions. So make sure you do know stuff about the NHS. So another station that MMI might have is a whole station on communication. Um, so as you know, communication um, in medicine is absolutely key. I might ask you a number of things. Uh, so they may ask you to, uh, to explain to the person how to tie their shoelace um, without using any hand gestures, just purely by your voice. They may ask you to deliver bad news to a patient. So they may have an actor there and they may ask you to deliver some bad news. So all my friends told me that in their interview, they basically had um, to tell the patient um, some bad news, which was basically that, um, that their child they were pregnant with uh, will develop a very bad disease. Um, so in a situation like this, you, you basically have to show uh, your empathy for the patient. Um, you need to maybe to make sure that you answered all their questions. Also, I want to um, tell them that there is counselling available to offer them counselling. Um, maybe offer their family counselling as well, because that can affect their family. Um, and one other thing you might want to do is actually say that I might actually go to counselling myself as a doctor, um, because delivering news like this can actually be really, really hard on a doctor. Um, so just saying that, that you know that you know, doctors find this quite hard and you know, to offer counselling for the doctor themselves might actually help. On this station, they may just ask you to, you know, to speak to a random student. Um, and they, just, they basically want to see how you communicate with people um, and whether or not you know, you're the type of person that has the personality to communicate good news, bad news, um, and just you know, general um, treatments, just general things uh, when being a doctor. But do bear in mind that communication uh, may be assessed at one station, but it's also definitely um, assessed at every single point of the session of the um, interview. So every station, they will be looking at communication. So when you walk into the interview room, make sure you shake their hands, uh, make sure you smile, make sure you speak clearly, uh, speak confidently. You know, take your time when answering the questions, and just show that you're someone who knows how to communicate uh, professionally. Going back to the uh, motivation insight into medicine, they may also ask you um, to explain to them why you've chosen to come to the university. Um, so they might say, you know, why did you apply to King's? Why did you apply to Birmingham or Nottingham, whatever university it is? So do do some research on the university itself. Uh, make sure you know, um, you know, some research that they've actually done and some reasons why you want to go to that university. Uh, so for example, in King's, I might say that, you know, it's based in London. Um, it's a multicultural society. So that means that there's a lot of diseases that might be prevalent in, the, in a big city like London. And this is an experience um, that I may not get in, in other parts of the country. Uh, you could also say that you know King's is a Russell Group University and it's one of the best universities in the world. So it's, it's actually in the top uh, top twenty. I think it's actually I think it's twentieth in the world. So you can say you know because of this um, standing in research, 
um, it really does motivate you to go to King's because um, you might want to do research as well. Maybe know one or two scientific breakthroughs um, the university has contributed to. I also know the teaching hospitals. So at King's there's a Guy's Hospital, there's a um, St. Thomas's Hospital, and there's also the King's College Hospital. So I'd say that, you know, these are amazing um, hospitals that I really want to be involved in. We'll also talk about the different support systems they have. So King's and Birmingham, for example, uh, do have first tutors um, that are assigned to you and who you can go and seek help from. And make sure you also know the, the, the type of teaching style that is in the university. So some universities are PBL, so problem-based learning. Some universities just completely have uh, lecture-based uh, teaching. Um, so do look into what type of uh, teaching they, they provide um, and also make sure you know the course structure as well. So in the MMI, they may also have a role play station. Um, so in the role play station, they normally have one or two actors um, and you're given a scenario that you have to kind of act out. So in one of my mock interviews, I was given a scenario where I worked for a company um, and I was driving a car and I was supposed to pick up uh, one of my colleagues and go to the airport to fly to a different country with her. So in this station, they assess different things, um, one of them being communication. Um, so I went up to the colleague and I asked, first of all, you know, what's your name? Um, introduce myself. So just make sure that you have the right person. So, you know, so again, ask their name, introduce yourself, um, you know, smile, be happy. Just be able to form a conversation with them. Uh, be yourself, uh, don't be awkward. And again, the main thing they're, they're testing in the station is communication. One of my friends um, had a station where he walked in the station and straight away, one of the, the um, patient actors collapsed. Um, so you need to know, um, so you need to kind of think what you do in a scenario like this. And just think of ways um, of dealing with a situation like this and what you do. Another station they might have is a debate station. So in the debate station, they can ask you to debate a number of different topics. For example, they might ask you, you know, what are the pros and cons of e-cigarettes? They might ask you, what are the pros and cons of privatizing the NHS? They may ask how you might reduce the frequency um, of mistakes that doctors make. They can ask you absolutely anything. You don't necessarily need knowledge of the scientific topic. You just need to have an ability um, to debate two different sides, uh, to take some time to think of some different points that you might give. So that's the end of the video guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope it's giving you some more insights into what the actual um, MMI process is like. I remember when I was preparing these views, I was really nervous, really scared and I had absolutely no idea what was coming up. But what I do promise to you is that if you work hard, if you spend some hours doing some research, uh, you will definitely do well in the interview. The reason I made this video is I had a number of people asking me about um, this topic. Um, so if you do have any more suggestions as to what I should do, please comment down below. If you have any questions um, about the interview process, whether it's the um, purse statement uh, or the UK CAT or the MMI, uh, please comment down below. Um, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, the next video I'll be giving you guys some general tips um, about the interview process. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, yeah.